You were talking about the tools that are available. Yeah. Uh -huh. So basically, I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they have something to say, you know. They, 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 were... they are really against uh, the labels. <laughs> <laughs> the labels, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they don't like trouble with me. My real name is Janne Hatula. My artist name is Fanu. I've been doing drum and bass for, around, let's say, around 10 years. Making music playing music, releasing music, um, <laughs> that's it, very shortly put, mm -hmm. drum and bass, a little bit of something else as well, I, also, I always say breakbeat music with various tempos, mm -hmm. like sometimes I go, like most often I go drum and bass, but sometimes I go a little slower, that's what I call a down tempo, but yeah, breakbeat music, let's say, let's call it that. And have you been doing it? Guess you felt alone most of the time. Or? Yeah. Yes. Pretty pretty much everything I've I've done has been alone, so to say. I've always been a solo artist. But not uh, well, if not creativity wise, but uh, maybe in terms of well, uh, have you ever had a manager or a booking agent, maybe no. or these kind? No, of I'm st I'm st <laughs> I'm still my own agent. I've learned a lot. Because when you're when you're your own agent, you have to deal with everything. You you kind of learn how the business works and how different people act, and you know you you also learn what not to do and uh, what you should be asking for and stuff like that. I kind of I kind of like it. Yeah, it, it's taught me quite a bit about the business. But yeah, I'm I am my own agent. Mm -hmm. What is the most sustainable business model uh, out there, if there is any at all? What do you think? Uh, I don't know, I'm still learning, but I don't know, you you gotta be, I don't know, that's a very hard topic. You gotta do a lot of work, at least. You have to be ready to put in lots of hours to make music, get the music out there. Also, being nice helps a little, I think. I mean, well, yeah, that's kind of, I don't know, but put in a lot of work and don't give up. Have, if you have a style of your own, just stick to what you're doing. Don't try to be like someone else. Do your own thing and have a little bit of what I call a blind faith. Like, don't give up, just do it for yourself in the first place. And if you do it like that, you're always going to be liking what you do so uh whatever comes after that it's just a bonus <laughs> i don't know so you have never made this uh, like goal of uh, living just by music or have you no i mean yeah maybe some years ago i thought that i i mean i still think that it would be super awesome to uh make music as my main job but then again i if music was my the only source of income that I have I probably I would probably have to do some compromises in in the style of music that I do so I don't want to be doing that but uh but yeah you uh, just get out do what you do work hard don't give up go for the blind faith and uh, try to give something back to the fans be nice do you think people are still, uh, well, ready and willing to come to the shows and see uh, artists performing live? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Because it's more, because everybody knows what, everybody knows what goes on when you're DJing. It's 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 fairly simple. You only have two songs and you beat match them. And well, that sounds really simple, but basically that's what it is. Of course, you're, you're gonna read the crowd and you know, like adapt to what what they like. But when you play live, there's so many different things you can do, and you can take all the songs and you can take parts from different songs and mix them together. You can you can kind of create new songs as you go. So that's different. You can if you want to. You can just make it really boring as well. But uh, 
yeah, in terms of playing live, it's it's more involving if you're putting your, yourself into it. So I think people are willing to uh, hear what happens and also see what happens because compared to DJing, you're, in, DJing you don't well you can be like this anyway, but when you play live, you have lots of stuff and you you trigger stuff and do whatever. I don't know. It it, it depends on the artist, I guess. <laughs> yeah. The tools that's uh, out that, that's out there for promoting yourself online are pretty much the same for everyone. So, yeah. what from your own experiences, you've been doing it on yourself for for a long time. Uh, what are some of the maybe recommendations for aspiring musicians, maybe or for for people who are trying to build the fan base uh, online? Uh, what works? I I don't even know. I was actually talking about that with my friends some time ago. We were discussing how hard it would be to start from zero today because there are so many artists and labels. Everybody has the same tools, which is it's a good thing and a bad thing. Everybody has them, so it, it, it doesn't make you very special. But I don't know, I guess, like I said earlier, that if you have a style of your own, if you stick out from the crowd, if you're different, if you're doing something that hasn't been done a million times before, it always helps. And work hard and don't expect to get results overnight work hard, get yourself out there and uh, I think those are the basic tools. If you have some skills, get <laughs> get better, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it, it's hard, it, it's hard. I don't know, if I had to start from zero, I don't know what, what I would be doing. I would probably be running around naked, showing my artist name and giving out flyers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would be desperate for attention. I still am. <laughs> I remember this uh, this mix of uh, was it a series? Do you think about your career at the moment? It's like you experience some issues with uh, earning money, I guess, with your music and uh, dedicating a lot of your, a lot of your time for it. Yeah, I don't know how to answer this one. Yeah, because when you're an artist, there will be moments when you ask yourself, is it really worth it? I don't know if you're having a bad day of or if you've been having a bad week in terms of music you, you sometimes you feel like I'm not I'm not where I'm supposed to be and sometimes you're you feel like I want to get further and I don't know maybe you get greedy or whatever then you start asking yourself should I be doing this or not but usually it takes a couple of days and you you're like like sometimes you have to distance your, yourself from what you're doing because sometimes you're gonna start taking it too seriously and it takes the fun out of it. For me, making music has always been about having fun. When I make music and when I'm working on a fresh track and I get the head nod thing, yeah, like this works, that's the best part and everything from there is downhill. But uh, I'm trying to keep it fun but every now and then you feel like things are going so slow and you know it's not happening sometimes you get grumpy so I just have to distance myself from it maybe go to the countryside go skateboarding whatever don't think about music for a few days do something else you'll get back to it it, it, it will happen <laughs> well you are not in that mood anymore these days no I'm feeling pretty good that's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I guess I'm pretty bipolar. That was just like a month ago. So. Yeah, yeah, I can guess that it's, it was like two, two days ago, uh, and so maybe you changed your mind. So, but it, it still was. Yeah, it happens to everybody, I think. Yeah, and I think you should. Every artist should realize that it does happen. It's kind of healthy to just get your thoughts out sometimes, so you're not wallowing in your bad thoughts for too long. Yes. Uh, so uh, you've got quite some uh, fans, some true, real fans out there. What do you think about the importance of your fan base? Uh, well, in general, maybe you get some specific stories maybe related to your listeners. Well, yeah, like I said, just like I just said that you should be making music for yourself. Well, that is the backbone of everything. I've never made music for any other reason than making it for myself, but eventually you're gonna feel like 
like when it starts happening, re labels release your music and it kind of becomes, if not your main job, at least a part of your income. So you kind of expect it to uh, continue. And sometimes there's a lot of uh, fluctuation. And uh, <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. It's, it's one pretty interesting direction. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask me again. I'll answer. Oh, the yeah, importance I was, I was the importance of fan base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Cause eventually you're gonna get to a point where you you have fans, and when you're feeling down, fans are gonna fans will hopefully tell you that they like your stuff, and that usually helps. I think. <laughs> I would say like to all all the young aspiring producers I would say make music for a pretty long time and try to develop your own sound try to be pretty confident with 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 what you do before you start spreading your music to labels and don't expect to get results too soon because I know like these days everybody's making music because it's so easy everybody's everybody has a piece of software that makes it easier for you to make music so there's so many artists that kind of start making music and they're really eager and then they give up because they feel like oh I was working on music for a year and nothing was signed so you shouldn't be expecting to get anywhere very soon because there are so many artists there's too much music too many artists but those who have energy and faith and um, those who don't give up they will make it one day it'll take some time but you know just if you're doing it for yourself you're doing it right <laughs> Great. Awesome. thank you yeah you're welcome